morning second third graders. We are going to do our second project, the Delaunay Circle Project. Make sure that you have your instruction page, um, your, and all of the supplies that are listed on there. Okay. If you don't have a ruler, you can use something that just has a straight edge on it. All right. And as far as the circle shapes to trace go, um, what I did, I had. I already had some shapes cut out uh, from a different project and I am also going to use uh, the bottom of uh, bottom and top of a little bucket. That's what I'm going to use. Those are going to be my circles. So you can use anything in your house um, that your mom and dad allow you to use that are round and you can trace around them. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get started now. Now the first uh, step in this project is to fill your page with circles, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to, I'm going to start with the larger circles. Um, and I noticed on the project page that I looked at that some of the circles go off the page. So don't be afraid to let some of your circles kind of hang off the page kind of like that. Okay? It's not all the way on the page, is it? But that's okay. So we're going to fill this page up with lots of circles. Okay? And if, here we go. Let's try that again. nice thing about tracing around circles is that if you don't get it right the first time, you can always try it again. There we go. Are you, how many circles are you going to get to trace on yours? I think I'm going to get four big circles on mine. And I might let one hang off right on the bottom here. just like that. Now our second step on there is it says to draw concentric circles inside each. That means you're going to draw more circles inside the circles that you have already drawn. Of course those circles that you draw inside those will be smaller. So the bottom of my bucket is smaller than the top. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to try to put it right in the middle of my circle and then I'm going to trace around it. Now if you don't get yours exactly in the middle, that'll be okay. I'm not going to worry about it. See mine isn't even exactly in the middle, but just try your best. So you can put different sizes in the circles, okay? And then we are going to use some of my paper circles as well. Okay. And almost done with this bucket. All right, there we go. I'm all done with my bucket. Now I have these circles that I cut out of cardstock and I'm going to use these to trace too. Alright, I've got these circles with the, that are made out of cardstock and I'm going to use these to make circles, concentric circles, on my larger circles. Okay, But I noticed in the project that I was looking at on Pinterest that they don't use it on every one of them. So I'm going to use this one on these two here, okay? Those are the only two I'm going to use them on. Then I'm going to use this medium size circle. Maybe I'll use this one over here. This will give a variety to our, our different circles and give them a different look. They don't all have to be the same, that's okay. 
Then I have the smallest circle that I have. Now I'm going to put this, I'm probably going to use this in a lot of my circles. We'll see how it looks. I really like this one. This is going to look really cool. And this isn't even the last step. So, you know what? I think I'm going to leave that one alone. But I'm going to put another little circle in this one down here. Did you see that? Put another little circle in this last one down here. Okay? Now, if I want to, I could add some smaller circles than these bigger ones. Let's see about using this. Here, I could use this one right here, couldn't I? I could fill some of that space. Now, it's going to hang off the edge a little bit. We don't really want our circles to overlap, though. Here we go. And I'm going to put a, a medium-sized circle inside that large circle. And I'm going to use my small circle inside of that one. Now, is there any space on my page that you think should be filled up? I'm thinking this corner up here. It's kind of empty, isn't it? But I think I'm going to let it hang off the corner to give it a little different look. It kind of matches the one down in the other corner, doesn't it? So here we go. We're going to fill this in with our concentric circles circles inside of circles. And there we go. Alright, now we're going to do something very interesting. Do you have your straight edge or a ruler? So what we're going to do, we're going to divide some of these circles up. Okay, We're going to take our ruler and you can do them diagonally or up and down, however you want. So I'm going to place my ruler on these two circles right here and inside those circles I'm going to draw a line. So I'm going to go from this edge of the circle to this edge of the circle. And then I'm going to jump over go from this edge of the circle to the other edge of the circle. See I just divided those up, didn't I? Now if I want to do uh, something else, I could also divide that in half again, couldn't I? So I'm going to do that on this one right here. From one edge of the circle to the other edge of the circle. But I'm going to leave this one alone. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to divide this one in half. I'm going to divide this one in half. And half again. How about that? Look at that. Looks like a bullseye, doesn't it? And let's do one or two more circles. What do you think about that? Let's do this one down here. We're going to divide this in half, going from one side to the other side, going through all of the circles, and going from one side to the other side, all the way through. And we're going to do this one up here. But I'm just I'm only going to do this one time though. I'm only going to divide this once. Here we go, just like that. And I think I'm I think that's all I'm going to do. Now, if you want to divide up all of your circles, that's fine. But I decided to leave these two circles on the corners. I wanted to leave those whole. Now, the important thing is when you do your when you start your coloring, what you're going to do is every place that you have a have a, have it divided up, you're going to have different colors. So maybe I want a red here and an orange here and a green here and a blue here. And then we'll make these colors different as well. Okay? You can kind of mix it up. And then, when you're all done with that, you can go in with a marker, or you can use markers or colored pencils on this, too. Um, you can go in and make the background one color, okay? 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you kind of how I'm going to start mine. And then I'm going to pause the video and do the rest of it and show you how mine turned out. So I have some of the colored markers that I have left over from what I gave you. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside each of these little um, shapes from this circle and I'm going to color them in. I'm going to start from the inside and work my way out. Okay? You can do whatever you want. You can work from the outside in if that makes you feel more comfortable. And you can even go ahead and decide which colors you're going to use. I'm just kind of bouncing around and kind of figuring out which colors I want to use. I like reds and pinks. Pink is my favorite color. Let's see. How about a how about a fun little blue? I've got this tiny little pencil. Tiny little blue pencil here. So if you notice, I'm coloring each of these shapes a different color. That's what we need to do on this project, okay? Now, this is going to take a little while, and it will take a little thinking on your part, but once you get it done, you will have an amazing project. Oh, let's use something nice and bright. I've got a really nice yellow that I can use here. Here we go. All right. All right, here we go. Okay. So I've got that first little circle done on the inside of that circle, and I had it split up into four different um, parts, and I have four different colors, okay? Now, my yellow, I'm not going to use another yellow here, am I? I'm going to use a different color. But I could use my yellow maybe on the other side, outside of that pink, okay? So you use as many colored shapes or colors as you want to. Um, you can add to your colored pencil collection that I gave you. Um, maybe you have some colored pencils at home. Or, you know what, if you only have markers at home, you could use, oh, let's do this. You could do this, too. You could use a combination of markers and colored pencils. What about that? I might pull out some of my markers, too. So I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to go ahead and color mine in and I will see you in a bit. Welcome back second and third graders. I wanted to show you the first circle that I colored in before I went any further in my video. If you notice, I do have some marker and some colored pencil. Before I go any farther though, I think it might be a good idea to pick out a background color. Because what if I decided, oh, I want to use blue for my background color. Well, I already have this blue, don't I? And if I color all of this blue, this part of my circle is going to blend in to my background. Well, I love pink. So I have already decided that this pink is going to be my background color. Now, what I can do is go ahead and color everything in between my circles or I can set it aside and not use it at all for any of the inside of my circles. I think what I am going to do is I'm going to color the background first and then I'm going to go back in and color the rest of my circles. Let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Welcome back second and third graders. So I have uh, loosely colored in my background with my pink that I really like. If you notice, it still has a lot of uh, white spots in there. Um, what I might do when I'm all done is go in with my colored pencil again and color in everything over uh, just to give it a more solid look. Um, so now that I have that done, I know that I don't want to use this color pink on any of the outside edges because I don't want this pink or my outside edges to bleed into my background. So now I'm going to pause the video again. I'm going to
color in my circle shapes and I'm going to uh, finish off my background and this is the time that you can go ahead and work on yours. Welcome back second third graders. So I have all of my circles colored and I have the background done. I have decided to go ahead and follow along with step four. It says color and outline your circles and background. So what I've done, I've taken uh, one of my Sharpie markers that I have at home and I have outlined the lines in this circle and the curves around this circle. I haven't done it to the, any of the other ones yet, um, but I'll do that later on. Anyways, I just wanted to leave you with this. Um, if you want to go ahead and finish your project and have your mom or your dad take a picture of it and then send it to me in an email, that would be really, really great. I would love to see what you have done and I am excited to see what different colors you decide to use. I hope you are having a great day. Um, remember, remember, just to take your time on this, if you need to use um, two or three days uh, to finish this project, um, go ahead and take two or three days to do this. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. Take your time and come back to it. Maybe take a break, maybe go take a walk or something or go play outside or play a game with your brother or sister and then come back to your work and that way you'll enjoy it a little bit more, okay? All right, you guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. I will see you or I'll talk to you